Hallelujah. It's another glorious day. It's another wonderful day. It's another blessed Saturday that the Lord has made. Wow. We are just in the month of June. Glory be to the name of God that for keeping us this long, for keeping us alive. Glory be to the Most High God for preserving our life to see today, to be alive today. Many are in the grave, many are in the hospital. We are alive, it's not because we are righteous, it's not because we merit it, it's not because we are too good with that. It is all the Lord doing and not a marvelous in, in our side. I give God the glory this morning, I give God the, the, the adoration that due to his name. Because if I am alive today, all glory be to God. If God said I will not wake up this morning, there's no way I could have waken up. But if you wake me up, maybe one of the reasons is for me to give you this message. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Uh, before we begin, as usual, let's call upon the Holy Spirit to come and take over. Hallelujah. Everlasting Father, King of glory, the Asia is obeying. The omnipotent God, the omnipotent God, uh, the one that walk in God, the great that I am, the I am that I am. Uh, the God that knows the hand from the beginning, the God that never changed but can change every situation. Uh, my master plan, and I adore you this hour, and I magnify you. Lord, I worship you for whom you are. Yes, Lord, you're worthy, Lord God. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be adored. You're worthy to be magnified. Uh, yeah, there's no one like you that's not to be compared to you from eternity to eternity. You are not the same God. Uh, I give you the glory that due to you, the sound. I give you the glory that due to you, Father. I give you all the honor and adoration, oh God. Uh, thank you, Father, for the gift of life, oh God. Uh, thank you for the hell of the one who brings us to God. Uh, Thank you because, Lord, we cannot have done it without you, Lord. That they thank you for making us to save us a wonderful moment to God. Thank you for this glorious day that you made for us to see. That we, what shall I say unto you, Lord? All I have to say is to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for making us to be alive this moment to God. My back in God, glory, Lord, the time has come for me to share your word again. I have no ways of my own, oh God. That is what I'm calling upon you, sweet Holy Spirit, uh, my helper. Come and help me to speak the word you want me to speak again this hour. Sweet Holy Spirit, I call upon you to come and take over. Take over everything that is in me, that every word that will come forth from me, Lord King of Glory, will be the word that you want me to speak. Uh, the way you want me to speak, and let that I shall not speak on my own, oh God, uh, in the name of Jesus. I surrender that you take over, sweet Holy Spirit, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree that you increase in me, oh God. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord, uh, the word that will come forth again, this sound, uh, let it be the word that will bless, oh God, every year that you hear it, oh God. Uh, let it bring, be a word that will transcend, oh God, uh, every life of everyone that will listen to the sound of my voice this hour, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, Father, Lord King God, you take the glory over this moment, oh God. Uh, thank you, glorious Father. Open the ears of everyone that will listen, oh God, uh, that will hear your word. Uh, Open their hearts, O Lord King God, glory to receive your word. Uh, and give them the grace, O God. Uh, the grace to put the word into practice, O God. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, thank you, omnipotent God. Uh, glory be to your name, O High God. Uh, in Jesus' wonderful name, I have prayed. Uh, amen, 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 and amen. Uh, Let's start day to everyone listening to the sound of my voice. I come to your ways again. Uh, like I long keep on saying that. Uh, my coming to your way this moment is not because I am good in preaching. My coming to your way this moment is not because I know the word more than you. My coming to your way this hour is not because I am better in speaking this word more than you. But my coming to your way is that that, that leads you that I know now. With the help of the Holy Spirit, uh, the word that I know by the revelation of the Holy Spirit, uh, as I share it with you today, uh, and you apply it to the much that you know, or those who know much, uh, or to the little that you know, people like me that always say we know little, but the time you have it together, it will bring a transformation into your life. Uh, and that is why I have come your way again this hour uh, to, to share with you the word of God. You know, sometimes we do things that we don't know. But by the time we know it through the revelation of the Holy Spirit or through the messages you hear, and you, 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 you after hearing it, you make a, a change of what you don't know before. And that is the reason why we are coming. Remember, a time will come. There will not be this opportunity that we are, we are using. The opportunity of sharing the word of God. There will time will come. There will not be. So the opportunity you have to have now, grab it so that the word will transform your life. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Most High God. I tie to my message today now. 
What gospel did you believe? One will say, this woman don't come again. Which, which kind of question you ask? <laughs> what gospel did you believe? Uh? Because this matters a lot. Uh. Today as today, we have so many gospel. And one will say, woman of God, they do not have one gospel. Uh, by the time I keep on talking, you will know that the gospel we are hearing today is more than one. Praise Master Jesus. Uh. And I ask a question. What gospel are you believing? Or what gospel did you believe? Because the pains on the gospel that you believe, uh, that make that that make what to know who are you. I'm talking about two gospel today. We have the gospel of men, the gospel of men, and the gospel of God. The gospel of God uh, is the words of God, uh, which the Bible presents to us. Uh, that is the gospel of God. Uh, so, the gospel of God, which the Bible presents, uh, or the gospel of men, which men present. Uh, which, uh, listen, I'm not talking about what I do. What gods are you serving? I'm not talking about God. Uh, I'm talking about gospel. When I mean the gospel of men, uh, the gospel of men, they preach the Bible, I swear. The men they pre preach the Bible, but the gospel they present to you is not what my Bible said, but the gospel, the one they said, the one they bring to you. And that is when I ask you this message, this question again. What gospel are you believing today? Today as today, we see so many things are happening today. We see so many things are conspiring today that we don't know where we are going from yet. In one hour time, we don't know what is going to happen because the sign is all over the place. It might be in one hour time, it might be 100, 100 years time, we don't know. But we need to be prepared. And for you to be prepared, you need to know the gospel you are, you are using. You need to know the gospel that you are into. That will make you prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus. Because if you believe on the gospel of men, my dear, I am telling you this hour, you are not for God. You will miss it. But if you believe on the gospel of God, it makes you prepared. It makes you be ready any time, any day, any hour, any minute. You need to be ready. And then it says, Son, that said, We are expecting Jesus. We are expecting, you know, we don't know when he can, he can come. He might come in the morning, night, or the new day. We don't know when he's coming. So, as a believer, as one who is, who, who, who are the gospel of God, we need to be, pre to, to be prepared every minute, seconds, and day. Hallelujah. What gospel did you believe? Is it the gospel of God which the Bible presents? I want to say a woman of God who write Bible. Now, men write Bible now, of course. There's no argument about that. Men wrote the, wrote the Bible. But the question is, what? What the Bible, the question is, uh, why did they why, why did they write the Bible for what the Bible was written and with what what inspiration was being used to write the Bible? Men did not just sit down and start cracking their brain. Let me put this one to this one, let me add this one to this and let it go. No, men wrote the Bible was written by men with the inspiration of God. Like I said at the beginning, I said that the, the, the message that I preach uh, is the message that the Holy Spirit gave to me. How? Because sometimes I prepare message uh, on my own and we're just or with my brain. I crack my brain to I write it. Uh, and the Holy Spirit tell me that is not the message you want me to prepare. Have I tell me the message you, you want me to prepare? He tell me how to prepare it. Uh, he tell me the verses he wants me to use uh, so that it can it can it, 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 it can work together. Men did not wake up one morning and started writing their Bible. The, the Bible. They wrote, the Bible was written by men through the inspiration of God. And the Bible is written to teach, to rebuke, to correct, and for training. Praise Master Jesus. We'll see that in the Second Timothy chapter 3. You know, I so much love this Bible of the thing. I so much love it because. You know, apart from Jesus saying, he is the word. And the Bible is the word of God. Not just the word of God. It's the manual of the believer's living. Without the Bible, if you said you are a believer without the Bible, you are not a believer. Because it's like someone said, you are, you, you, are, you are living without food. It's impossible. 
One cannot live a day without food except for when you're fasting and praying. That one is fasting. But listen, if you're not fasting and praying, just try it. From morning till evening, don't eat. They can't, they can't stomach where go pay you. Not be me go tell you that you're wrong. <laughs> Hallelujah. The same thing. Man cannot live without the word of God. Like you say, you are a believer. It is impossible. And the word of God is God, they said. And the word of God is full of life. The Bible is full of life, it's full of peace, it's full of joy, it's full of ways of encouragement. Hallelujah. Like I said before, to straighten, to teach us, to rebuke, to correct, and to train us. Let's quickly see the, Bible, the, the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse, or verse 16 and verse 17. All scripture is God breathed. And it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training with righteous things, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped. Listen to that. So that the servant of God, the man of God, the woman of God, will be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Hallelujah. Be thoroughly, be equipped. Be, that is, be filled. Be ready, be prepared for every good work. And if you don't have the word, how are you going to you do it? And this, go back to my question. After hearing this, that the Bible was, is, is an inspiration from God. And I ask the question again. What gospel are you turning it to? Are you turning to the gospel of God, which my Bible presents, or you're turning to the gospel of me? Because today, as today, we see many people, they are turning to the gospel of men. The gospel which men present. Listen, like I said at the beginning, this man, they listen, they quote the Bible, the same Bible that I quote, but they quote it to suit them, not the way my father presents it in the world. And men that they are their followers, they listen to what they say. You know, those turning to the gospel of men, those are the people, they don't even know how to open their Bible. And they have been going to church. They will tell you that for years, I have been in church for 10 years. Okay. Wow. That is good. He's a Christian. He has been, to, he has been, he has been going to church, church for 10 years. He has been born again for 10, 15 years, 20 years. You can name it. But when you say open Genesis, they will go to, they will go to New Testament. <laughs> oh God have mercy. <laughs> Genesis, you call Genesis, they will be looking for Genesis in the New Testament. They don't know how to open their Bible. All they know how to say is, my pastor say, my reverend say, my dicky say, my dickiness say, my dad say, my this say, my dad say. That is all they know. Those are the ones turning to the gospel of men. Now, they listen to what they say. Now, what, is, what their pastor says or what their reverend says is the final. They don't have, they not what the word of God says. Those are the ones uh, turning to main gospel. Because my that is why today you, those are the kind of believers, they call themselves believers. To me, they are not believers. They call themselves believers. They are the ones that they brainwash. They brainwash. That they are the ones that they can brainwash. Because my pastor say, I'm sorry, my pastor say, come on, you know, the other day, like I said, uh, he put, a, a pastor puts your, his leg on your head uh, and he's washing his leg on your head uh, and you are like, you are happy. You, are, you think you are receiving anointing. Which anointing you are receiving? Where is it written in the Bible that a man of God will put his leg on your head and wash his leg on your head? But because you don't know the gospel of God, it's possible. You might think you are receiving blessing when you are receiving cause. Because you don't know the Bible. Because you don't, you're not in the gospel of God. You are in the gospel of men. You are following men. And you say, I don't serve idols. Of course, you don't serve idols. I'm not like those people that go to the to place. I don't go to the to place. So sorry. People who go to the place better pass you. So it better, it better go to the to place. And they will not say that the to place will be good. You just know that there you go. So that at the end you die, you miss heaven or you miss heaven. That will be going to church and the end you still miss heaven. May that not be our portion in Jesus' name. What gospel are you turning into? The gospel of God. Those who have the gospel of God, 
And the one that they cannot do without this word. They cannot do without the Bible. They quote the Bible, not only quote the Bible, because I'm not even in the, in the side of those people that quote the Bible. I'm not, in, I'm not on the side of the people that quote the Bible, because it's not a far but our way. The God does not want who can quote the Bible. But what God wants those who can quote the Bible and live by what they quote. So those who are, who are in the gospel of God, those are the ones that live they quote the Bible, they study the Bible, and they live with the Bible. Whatever they say is from the Bible. Whatever they want to do is from the Bible. Every word that which they say with by their foot, you shall know them. Everything they are doing is referring to this Bible. Because they cannot live without the Bible. Just like man cannot live by food. The children of God, those who believe on God's God, on the gospel of God, they cannot live with the Bible. Like I said, those who believe on the gospel of men, they quote the Bible as well because their pastor quotes it for them. The way their pastor quotes it for them, the same way they will quote it. They are the pastor follower. They follow the pastors. That is what you see that my daddy, my mommy, my daddy says, my mommy says. Whatever the pastor quote is what they take, it's what they believe. They don't even have time to go and see, say shit if it is true to, or if it is not true. The pastor don't talk. And my pastor say, my pastor say, that is the only thing you hear from them. Those who believe in the gospel of God, after hearing the message, the message they hear, they take their time, say that balance that message. You know what I say? They balance it into their self by going through again. Not only balance, for example, they preach a message. You, by the time you are balancing it, you see on that verse again that the pastor did not have it. On your own, you had it to you. You begin to know, they, know, they nourish their self through the word of God. They have heard, they've heard the Britain is for the word of God. They nourish, they train themselves with the word of God. Those are the ones that believe in God, the gospel of God. They are not after what my pastor said. They listen, but when they go to, they make their own research. You know, I keep on telling people, I say many people begin to say, there is a revelation, a prophecy will come, they will declare. Everybody will say, Amen, Amen. Look, listen, it's not enough for you to say Amen. It's not enough for you to say me because the one that says it, he has quoted it. Your amen will not make it work. What make it work is when you believe, you go to the Bible, you see that that, that thing is written there. You claim it. Lord, your word said. That is what the, those who believe on the gospel of God says. Uh, Lord, your word said. Uh, I remember, you know, when people used to go to labor room, when they go to the labor room, when they come out, they'll say, what song are you? I, I, I happen to be with one in the labor room. And when, after she gave birth, I was, I was laughing with her. I say, ah, see, this is the song you were singing. I was making jest of her. And many people that go to labor room, when they come out, say, what song did you say? What were you saying? We begin to laugh each other. But when I went to my labor room, they asked me the same question because I, I have been asking, what I, Lord, your word said. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, your word said that was what I was. That is the only word. Lord, your word said before before I go into labor, I will give birth. Before pain comes upon me, they cannot use that one to laugh me. The word of God said, the word of God said that is what they will use to laugh me. What I mean is that those who believe in the gospel of God, they live by the word of God. And every word that comes from the mother is the word of God, not what men say. Let us also the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, sorry, Galatians chapter 1 from verse 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 1 from verse 6, he said, I am astonished that you are so quickly distasting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ. And I turn it to a different gospel, verse 7, I'm reading 6 to 10. Verse 7, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to prevent the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven 
should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you. Let them be under God, God's cause. As we have already said, that. so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you are accepted, let them be under God's cause. Am I not trying to win the, am I trying, am I not trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were say trying to please people, I could not be servant of Christ, said Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul, sorry. If they bring another gospel that is not the gospel of God, he said, cause is on that person. The one that preached the gospel that is not a gospel of God. He said, how quickly you are turning away from the gospel of God. Many people, many people started in the gospel of God. Many Christians today, they started in a church where they believe in the gospel of God, where they live by the Bible. And because they are looking for miracles, because they are looking for signs and wonders, because they are looking for the man of God that will lay their hands upon them, a miracle will happen. Because they are looking for that, they don't go away from the gospel that they grew up with, and they went into the gospel of the new person, the man that can do a miracle. And by so doing, they are going, they are turning away from the gospel of Christ. By so doing, they are turning away from the gospel that they grew up with. Many today they have been there, they know they have been in the gospel of Christ. But because of one thing or the other, or because of the situation of the world, or because of what they are passing through, they are turning away from the gospel. A man begin to use them as a rag because they don't have the word of for their own. They don't have the word of God in them. All you will hear is what they may told them to do. If not, they are turning to a God. That kind of man of God, you go and eat glass. It's a miracle. You start eating glass and it's like a like a goat. We is it written in your Bible? But unfortunately, you don't know. God have mercy. You don't know if it is written there or not because you don't read your Bible. Why would they brainwash brainwash you? Why would they brainwash you because you don't know? Now, it is the, the, the more of the word of God you know, the more liberty and freedom you get. But if you don't know, somebody can just come to you and say, "Ah, the Bible says, pack all your money, all your money that you have in there. You're not supposed to have money. Pack all the money and give it to." You. Because many people are quoting it that as a Christian, you're not supposed to be rich. Because you don't know where it is written, you know. Even if it is written, it's not written, you don't know. Because you don't quote, they don't know the Bible. Of course, you'll give them. And that is why we see today that many have been, they have been laid astray. But it's time you believe in the gospel of men. Let me tell you what we heard it. You end up discouraged, disappointed. Why? Because men cannot help you. They are just men, mortal men like you. Of course, they suddenly they lead you more of the Bible. They lead you, they know. They have their own to join us. They have sugar, maggie, salt, mix that together so that when they use that word on you, it will sweet. You know, say, know that there are some people that have that man. They are so sweet when they talk, they can, you know, they can use their mouth to bring more kids down from God because they have sweet mouth. So, those kind of people, it's enough for them to have some, some, some verses in the Bible and they miss it with their whole or they made they the way they know they miss it together and they serve you with it. Oh, you say, Wow, this one is sweet. They started, started following there. Wherever they go, instead of following them, they are leading you astray. At the age, you'll be discouraged. At the age, you'll be disappointed. Because you believe on them. Those who believe on the gospel of men, they believe in men, not God. And men cannot save you, unfortunately. Men cannot help you out. When you are in need, men cannot come to your head because they themselves are looking for help. 
If somebody that is looking for help, you are going after that person to give you help. Why is it not possible? Because the Bible told us that the only person that can help us is God. Praise Master Jesus. Let us also see the book of John chapter 8. John chapter 8 verse, verse 47. John 8 47 says, He said, Whoever belongs to God, hear what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, Those who belong to God, they hear Him. Are you hearing God? Is He speaking to you? Did they recognize you? They didn't know you as a believer. Even you tell me that I go to church, I, I go to church every day. Good. Clap for yourself. I don't miss any service, okay. But the question is, did God recognize you? It's an important question. Did God recognize if you don't miss any service, Monday to Sunday, you're in the church. You pray them as many as possible. But did God recognize you? He said, verse 47, I said, whoever belongs to God, hear what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. You do belong to God. If God does not hear you, it's because you do not belong to God. Again, let us also see the book of John chapter 10, 14. John 10, 14. He said, I am, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep knows me. Did the good shepherd know you as his son? If he does not know you because you're not turning to his gospel, you're not following the gospel of God, you can be in the church, but God does not recognize you. You can be in the church, but God does not know you as his own. You did not belong to, 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 to God's family. It's in the church. <laughs> I tell people, going to church does not make you saved. Because the devil go to church. If they will not they go to the church, all those people where they deceive people, where, where they find them, not be answered for they find them inside church. The devil goes to church as well. So it's not by going to church 24 hours of the day. It's not by praying 24 hours of the day. Because if you are believing on the, the, gospel, the gospel of men, and you pray according to their way, that God is not listening to your prayers. He said he did not know you because he did not recognize you as his, as his, as his own. The Bible says there's no salvation in, a, in, a, in a other, any other place. Salvation is only in God through Jesus Christ. If you're going after the gospel of man, and this is my message today for you, return from it. How do you know that you're going from that what you're doing is not the gospel of God? How did you know that the gospel that you believe is not the gospel of God? Simple. When last did you read your Bible? When last did you study your Bible? When last did you say the word of God says? By the time you did not know what the word of God says, you don't it did not belong to God. All you need to say is my pastor say it was written. My dick he say it is written. My reverend say it is written. You are believing in the God of that pastor and the reverend. And whatsoever you are doing is referring to him. You are serving that pastor or that man that is leading you in that church or that woman. You are serving him and you are his follower. And as long as you remain a follower of men uh, that give us say what they say, uh, not what God says, uh, and you, you, you replace what God says to what men say, you are, men, uh, you are believing on men God's faith. Let us also, also say the word, the Bible, the, the, what the word of God says in Titus, Titus, Titus chapter 2. Hallelujah. Titus chapter 2, I read from verse 7 to 8. Titus 2, 7 to 8. It said, In everything, set there an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, show integrity. 
integrity, seriousness, and sadness of speech that cannot be condemned, so that those who oppose you may be, may, may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about, about us. Hallelujah. In everything, show integrity. May they know that the gospel that you're presenting is the gospel of God. I also I want to also add, add this one to the first Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 12 to 13. First Corinthians 2, 12 to 13. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 to 13 says. He said, what we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has really given us. This is what we speak, not in ways taught us by human wisdom, but in ways taught us by the spirit, explaining spiritual reality with spirit-taught ways. What we say is not in human ways. It's ways that is taught by the Holy Spirit. And that is what I used to begin this message. That through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. So the word that we teach is the word that the, the revelation of the Holy Spirit is the word is the Bible. The word that we taught is the word that we receive from the Holy Spirit. Not the word we receive from men by saying that man said. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 4, verse 12 says, There's no salvation in this way. So, this, this morning, I'm encouraging us, as many that are in that category, the category of my pastor say, You know, these people, you cannot argue with them. No. <laughs> I have had opportunity of being in their midst. You cannot argue with them. My pastor know this. My pastor know that. My pastor say. My pastor say that. My, I am tired of fed up with my pastor say. Where does the word of God? Where, where do, which place did he have in you? Where does the word of God? Which place does he have in you? The word of God. As I said, they, 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 they say he says she says that say who says. The word of God does not have place in you at all. They cannot, they, they cannot, they can hardly quote the word of God. And they will, they will strongly argue the words that their pastor says or their, their whosoever lady they says. And the same thing is happening today. Many so focusing on what those people say, uh, what they do, uh, they say, and they put the word of God in the, in, in, in the back. Uh, the word of God will not have place in what we do. What gospel are you turning into? Are you still standing in the gospel of God, which is the only truth gospel? Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a relation. It's a relationship, not a religion. It's the only true gospel. The gospel of God is the gospel, the true gospel, not the gospel of men. We should allow what God says at place in us. By so doing, it will be difficult for one to, like me now, for one to come and brainwash me. The person will see two times. Even the devil. Before he come to me, go teach it two times. I not to know the Bible. The little when I know, I say, my Bible tell me, say, by the time you know the word of God, by the time the word of God dwell in you, it will be difficult for all pastor to come and tell you to do this, to do that, or not to do this. That is what I'm encouraging us today. If you have turned away from the gospel of God, go back to the gospel of God. Because the God of Spirit of God is the only guaranteed gospel. The guaranteed gospel that will make you not miss heaven. But the gospel of men will make you miss it. Because that pastor of yours will not take you to heaven. Your reverend, your dick, your dickiness, your leave that in the church, they cannot take you to heaven. The Bible says, when the trumpet stand, a man, each man will stand on his own. He says, you will stand, I will stand. Your mother will stand. Your mother cannot guarantee for you. 
Your pastor that is there, the pastor said, the pastor say, he will not guarantee for you. Every man go answer your papa me. You answer your own papa me, me answer my own papa me. So we should do away with those gospel. I talk to the gospel of God. It's the only guarantee. It's the only assurance that we have. It's the only word that can save us. And not only save us, but will take us to that promised land. To that place that we all are waiting for. After waiting, after calling upon God, after you have, you, you have made all the sacrifice, at the end, you thought, you thought that what you're doing is the right sacrifice. And after making all the sacrifice, you miss it. It that not be our portion in Jesus' name. So to everyone listen to the sound of my voice this hour, I encourage us, if you have turned away from the gospel, Apostle Paul said, if anyone present the gospel, apart from this one, apart from this one, run away. If you don't get like, come borrow my own journey, run. Why? Because there is a, a everything has an expiry date. Your time on earth has expiry date. And when that expiry date comes, we must go. And where are you going to? So if anybody comes with a gospel that is not a gospel of God, it's not what you believe, just to brainwash you, run from it. Run from it. Hold on to the gospel of God. The only, the only, one, that, the only, the only one that can save you, that can save your soul, and that can make you head away. Because we are a pastor by at the end of our business here on earth, we are going to a place where we, where you're going to depends on the gospel you believe on today. Where you will pass your eternity depends on the gospel you believe on today. Now, if you believe on the gospel of God, and you live by the gospel of God, and I assure you, you will end well, you will finish in heaven. And that day, your father will welcome you as a faithful and a, a faithful servant. But if you believe on the gospel of men, on that day, you say, I know you know. Because, like when we read in the book of John chapter 8, verse 7, he said, I know my sheep. My sheep, they, my, my, I know my sheep, and my sheep knows me. Now, in the, the book of John chapter 10, verse 14, I know my sheep, and my sheep knows me. And in the book of John 8, 47, he said, he said that they don't listen, they don't hear, God does not know you because it, it did not belong to him. On that day, when you get to when you get to the to the to the, to the, to the judgment seat, he will say, get, get behind of me because I know you not. And you think you spend your day in church. And you speak, think you spend your years in church. Yes. Did you go to church? Of course you go to church. But the difference is that, yes, you go to church, and me, I go to church. But the difference between us is that the gospel we believe. That is what made the difference. Many go to church for different reasons. So I'm not talking about those who go to church for different reasons. But I'm talking about the gospel that you believe on. You go to church. You do church activities. But the gospel you believe on is wrong. If you believe on the gospel of men. After hearing this word today, Rethink, reflect, and go back to your Bible. It's the only true friend. My Bible is my best friend because through the Bible, I got to know the, the, the person of the Holy Spirit. Through the Bible, we get commercial with God. So this is the message I want to encourage you on today again. If you're turning away from the gospel of God, return back to the gospel of God. That is the only salvation. And God will help us. May God give us a grace so that we will not turn away from the gospel of God. So that men will not use it to brainwash us and to lead us astray. In Jesus' name. Father in heaven, I thank you, God. I glorify you. I bless you for your word, God. Your word has come forth again, O God. May this word we hear to be made us turn against all of the last day, Father. But may this word help us, O Lord, to have a written a reflection of our life, O God, of the gospel that we are believing, O Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. May this word we hear today, O God, that bring a transformation, a change into our life, into our home, into our family, O God, into our churches as well, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, O God, as many, O God, that as making the sacrifice there and then may they not miss it, O God. Give them the grace to open their eyes, their spiritual eyes, O God, to know which of the gospel they belong to, O God, so that, Lord, 
that the last day they will be saved, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us, O oh Lord, King of glory, to hear your word and to practice your word, to be the doer of your word, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, glorious Father. Thank you, Jehovah Messiah. Thank you for giving me this privilege to speak your word again today, O oh God. And as many that hear the sound of my voice today, O oh God, but by let today mark the beginning of a new dawn in their life, a new beginning in their life, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, King of glory. Be that glorified, be that exalted, O oh Lord. For in Jesus' wonderful name, I have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful and a glorious day. Amen.